My name is Harold Kittler, and the next two lectures will be about artificial intelligence, what we can learn from machines, and how machines will affect our daily clinical practice in the future. A very exciting topic. Are we going to be replaced by machines? I don't think so. And uh, if you remember, or at least those of you who are in the 50s, if you think back, now this is not the first hype about computers and machine learning and skin cancer diagnosis. We had this already in the 1980s of the past century. And uh, this was the second hype then. The first hype was in the 1950s when artific artificial intelligence just developed. And in the 1980s, we had a time when we heard that machines are around the corner that will diagnose melanoma automatically without the need of human expertise. It didn't happen then. And why did it not happen? And what is so different now? Now, if you remember, uh, in those days, in the 1980s, machine learning was rather difficult, rather cumbersome. And why? Because we had to tell the machines, the computer, where the lesion is. We had to tell where the background is. The machine couldn't extract this information from the image automatically. This is now different. And we also had to handcraft the features that were fed to the classifier. Well, for example, we had to tell the machine where are pseudopods, where is a network, where is black, where is brown, where is everything, where is symmetry. And uh, nowadays, these features are extra extracted automatically. But in those days, this did not happen. And then all these features were fed into a classifier, an artificial neural network, for example, and then the classifier spit out an answer. Now, how good were these algorithms in the 1980s? Well, we did a major analysis of uh, studies that were published between 2002 and 2017 and comparing computer diagnosis of melanoma with human diagnosis. And all these studies, although they were published late, um, they dealt with uh, machine learning as it was practiced in the 1980s. So handcrafted features. And you see, although the technique was rather simple and not state-of-the-art in comparison to what we do now, the machines did rather well in comparison to humans. This here is a receiver operating characteristic curves or two curves. The straight line is the curve for machines and the dotted line is the line for humans and dermatologists especially, yes, they are also humans. And um, when you see the two curves, they overlap, which means the diagnostic accuracy was the same for machines as for uh, dermatologists when it comes to melanoma diagnosis. So, well, why did the machines not succeed then? And we've seen a lot of studies in those days, and uh, this meta-analysis included a lot of studies, and all were very optimistic. And this is, for example, what the CEO of a company said uh, that, uh, uh, that purchased Melafind, a very um, famous machine then that would also work with automated diagnosis. He said that this is a breakthrough, breakthrough device and it will change the way melanoma is diagnosed in the future. Well, this was very optimistic, too optimistic because melafine is, uh, is not existing anymore and also a machine you cannot buy anymore. So those algorithms, those machines then didn't make it. Because when they were tested in the field, the algorithms did not as well as expected, they did not perform well. And for example, here is one field test of an algorithm you see, and this is for melanoma diagnosis, that at a sensitivity of 95%, the machine reached a specificity of only 8%. And at the sensitivity of 50%, which means half the melanomas were overlooked, uh, the specificity was still rather low. So this is unacceptable 
for clinical practice. And the machines did not do well in practice. The reasons, uh, there were many reasons for that. For example, the studies were too optimistic because the lesions were selected and so on. This was uh, uh, still, a, it's still a problem nowadays, but then it was more of a problem because um, nobody looked at it carefully. Nobody had a close look at those studies when they came out. And uh, finally, we saw that the machines did not as well as expected when used in practice. Now we have the third hype. 